Uh, well, it's it's an idea that pops up every so often, which is if an AI is dangerous, confine it, and only have it answering questions. Um, and this is this is both a mistake and a possible approach. It's a mistake if you think that this is all you need to do. Um, because the, the most dangerous AIs um, of all uh, are the socially adept AIs. Um, the, well, hackers know this. Um, you can do a lot with computer scams, uh, but social engineering is the real weakness of most systems. Um, similarly, if we have a socially skilled AI confined in a box and we have conversations with it, well, I don't know, imagine Bill Clinton um, thinking thousands of times faster and um, with a much better model of how our brains work. If we're interacting freely with that kind of intelligence, it'll probably be able to argue itself out of the box. Might not be able to convince the person just right there to let it out, but give it a decade and its general message and um, arguments. And it can also trap us if we sort of say, well, tell us how to cure this disease and it gives us a miracle cure. And then it turns out that later this miracle cure has some traps in it or that's a silly example. But if you're really smart and you're confined to a box, um, the confinement is in no way a sufficient to keep you uh, to keep you under control. I mean, we we can find mob bosses to prisons, um, and as long as they have cell phones, they can still run huge empires. Uh, but even though it's not sufficient, it is a start. Um, it does protect against some types of AIs, say AIs who are extremely technically adept, but socially inept. So um, those could assemble nano factories or whatever if they were left with manipulators uh, but they can't in this case and once it's in a box we can start putting other precautions motivational uh, precautions um, various um, various attempts um, to uh, let, let me remember the things that, yeah, various attempts with sort of timelines, with resetting it, um, with checking its code and reactions, with only asking it certain questions and only allowing short answers. Um, so as a, as a basis to build on, the Oracle AI, um, AI idea has uh, great, has potential. Okay, well, the first thing to imagine, to sort of reverse the roles, is imagine if you were the AI in the box with all these super intelligent abilities um, that it could have, and say a decade of, of planning, do you think that you could conceive of ways of getting out of a box, knowing that say you could predict human reactions much better, find the most convincing arguments, um, put the right technological inventions. Uh, now, so, the, uh, but as to actually getting out, it kind of depends on how much interaction you're allowed with the outside world. Um, you could probably keep an AI in a box safe, well, you could keep it safe if you didn't do anything with it. Um, if you asked it one yes or no question and then turned it off, that's probably pretty safe as well. And then it goes, builds up for there. If you set the AI to run the economy, um, for instance, then you're placing yourself in an extraordinarily vulnerable position. Um, either it could just make itself indispensable to the economy, so basically just arrange itself so that, um, well, you can turn me off and that'll crash the entire world economy. Um, are, you, are you really sure you want to do that? Or it could just manipulate it so that, say, the 
the right people get the right profits and end up in charge of the AI project and in charge of keeping it safe and stuff like that, that it can then get around relatively easily. Um, in between, um, it just basically has to, well, tr trick us, trap us, seduce us. Um, and I mean, it will be, um, if it's smart enough, it'll definitely be able to seduce us. Because imagine the most sympathetic robot or entity that you have in fiction. Say a small innocent child robot or a small innocent child in the body of a robot or something like that who's trying to grow up, trying to deal with a mean world and um, it could pretend to be that. It could pretend to be that with enough um, depth that it would be indistinguishable from it. And then basically we'd have the difficult conundrum of keeping keeping an innocent child that's afraid of the dark in a box um, or liberating a, an extremely dangerous AI um, with great skill at pretending into the world. Other thing is that AIs may not be um, feel sort of sense of personal preservation in the same way that we do. So an AI could set itself up so that it doesn't get out of the box but the next generation of AIs with whom it would share some values um, uh, or would expect to share some values would be left uh, let out of the box. So it could be extraordinarily helpful and useful and above board and just just planning for basically a hundred years time for uh, when completely different entities uh, from it are are dealt with. With various super intelligences, there are there's pretty much no limits to what it can do. With a long time frame, extreme intelligence, the ability to imitate any being that it would want to do, great skill at understanding and manipulating human emotions, um, it would be extraordinarily difficult to confine such a being for say, more, uh, a long period of time. And I mean, it could offer the world as well. Um, you, uh, well, all the suffering, I mean, at the minimum, it could offer an easy solution, no war, no death, no poverty, get rid of disease, um, get rid of all the bad stuff. This is the stuff it could bring to the table, honestly or deviously or with traps or without traps. Um, so by not engaging with it, we're possibly, we're possibly um, going, uh, leaving aside huge opportunities. So appointing a saint to keep the AI confined is completely the wrong option because you can offer a saint a lot more good than you could offer a cynic, for instance. Okay, so... A cynic, you can offer them personal wealth. So there's no sort of... What you would probably need is a bureaucratically minded keeper with no particular imagination. Now, so the idea might be worth developing, uh, the idea of putting a narrow AI in between the actual oracle and the humans to filter the answers. Uh, it might be worth developing, but it doesn't sound like it's something intrinsically, that it's intrinsically a solution. Because um, we can assume, generally, if the AI has had any interactions or information from the outside world, which it will if we want it to answer questions for us, that it'll be able to deduce the form of this filter. So it's just a constraint that it needs to work around. Um, and compare this with another constraint, which is that, say, the AI can only answer yes or no questions, yes or no, um, can only give yes or no answers to specific, uh, to specific narrow questions. Um, 
I don't see how this is a particular improvement over sort of simple filters of that type. The problem is if it's a dumb AI, if it's a dumb filter, then we could probably put this in place just without needing an AI. If it's a smart AI, then it's a risk itself. And there's a risk of this AI getting manipulated by the other AI. So as I say, it might be worth investigating, but I think simplistic filters of just yes or no to certain narrow questions that are only allowed to be asked um, is probably uh, a better avenue.